Hey there YouTube, this is Lewis from Sky Blue Adventures. Uh, we're out sailing today on um, our Hunter 306 out on uh, Biscayne Bay. And uh, this is just going to be an introduction to uh, our project for converting uh, this Hunter 306 to uh, an e-propulsion Navy 6.0 pod EVO. Um, we're going to be working on this project as soon as that EVO pod is available and we hope to get it done uh, by the early fall. Um, what we're just going to talk about in this video is just kind of what the specs are, what the specs of the boat are, just to give um, give customers a, an idea out there if they do want to convert to electric, uh, what, what type of boat is appropriate, and really what kind of situation because, you know, this is not a cruising boat. This is the boat that we use on the weekends. Um, you know, we stay out two, three, sometimes a week at a time. And that's really, you know, kind of the use that we have for it. Uh, that's not to say that you couldn't convert um, a cruising boat with the e-propulsion Navy pod, uh, but in this particular application, we're looking at uh, a weekend boat conversion. And uh, so we're going to go over the specs of the boat now and uh, talk a little bit about the specs of the system. We're going to talk about pricing and um, kind of really the overall benefits that you have uh, going with e-propulsion uh, as opposed to the now numerous uh, types of uh, uh, or branded systems out there, uh, options of batteries, and you know, whether you go with a sail drive or whether you go with a kind of a replacement to maintain your shaft, uh, or whether you go with a pod. So let's take a look at the specs now uh, of the boat, and then we'll take a look at the specs of the E-Propulsion Navy pod drive with the E-Series batteries and the uh, side mount control. So the boat is a 2003 Hunter 306. Uh, she's a pretty light displacement, uh, two cabin sloop, I, I believe is what she's referred to. Uh, there's a in furling main, in mast furling main. Um, uh, pretty nice accommodations for a 30 foot boat, and probably the only criticism really is the amount of storage space, but that's kind of to be expected with a, a 30 foot boat. She has the uh, wing keel making her uh, shoal draft, 29.92 uh, feet uh, length overall. The beam is just shy of 11 feet and dry, dry displacement is uh, 7,150 pounds. Uh, pretty good sailing boat considering uh, her proportions and uh, she sails pretty comfortably at about five and a half to six knots without much fuss. So in deciding whether or not the Navy 6 pod was adequate for the Hunter 306, I'm using the performance data that uh, ePropulsion has listed on their uh, website uh, as a comparison. Uh, Igor, um, I'm not, I can't remember exactly where he's at uh, in the world, but um, he built his own 33-foot uh, sailboat, which has uh, similar proportions, not exactly, a little bit heavier actually than, than the Hunter 306. And um, as you can see by the performance numbers, I would say that I would consider that the Navy 6 pod is, is adequate for my particular application. So I just wanted to briefly review some, just a couple of options, alternative options for um, electric propulsion. Uh, Ocean Volt is one of the higher end units, um, pretty sophisticated systems, uh, but as you can see here, for a six kilowatt drive you're looking at twelve thousand dollar twelve thousand euros uh and then <clears throat> that's uh, not including batteries or control units so it's uh while they look like amazing systems um you are paying a premium for those so on the lower end of the cost spectrum you have um electric yacht which um have quite a few units out there from what i understand and uh they're relatively uh, good units uh, capable of, of hydro generation, but your your cost overall is still going to be above uh, what e-propulsion is offering uh, because you have to consider, again, the batteries, uh, whatever optional control unit you want. What e-propulsion is offering really is a plug-and-play system. Uh, they're removing the mystery or the confusion around how much um, how much battery do I need, how do I hook up those batteries, whether those batteries are in series, whether those batteries are in parallel. It just simplifies um, the overall system. 
and gives you a system that works well integrated together with features that uh, you really don't get with uh, any of the other units uh, on the market, including the um, you know straightforward hydro generation function and um, the ability to have safety wristbands. That's a great new feature for for smaller you know, kind of open fast sailing boats that um, you, you want to make sure that your you know your crew is safe on. That's a, an amazing uh, new feature that, that no one else offers. And a couple of different options in terms of controls. What we're looking at here on the screen is uh, uh, the Evo remote, the top mount remote. That same remote is available in a, in a dual configuration if you are running dual pods on a catamaran, for example. Uh, and what I will be installing is a side mount control, which is a little bit more compact. It allows you to move the screen to a separate place. And the propulsion is doing this at a price point for a complete plug and play system under $8,000 with a 9,000 watt hour battery. Here you can see some of the specs on the unit. It, it is a 48 volt unit, just like um, all of the other uh, e-propulsion products and offerings. Um, and you can use uh, third party batteries with the system, with the pods or with the outboards. But of course, you don't get the uh, communication between the battery and the controller, so you lose some functionality. Really, the only scenario that I can see where you would want to use a third party battery is maybe if you already had an established battery bank and you didn't want to spend the money. The price point on the uh, E series batteries is very attractive at about 50 cents per watt hour. So it, it really doesn't make any sense to uh, go with a third party battery considering you're getting uh, a lot of added function and a great price uh, for, for those batteries with the E propulsion system. Another great feature that ePropulsion has uh, built into the, their system is the hydro generation function. Um, you can, it's hard to tell from this chart, but basically hydro generation starts at about four knots and, uh, and then just increases all the way up to 18 knots where the system will automatically cut off the hydro generation function. And uh, it's a worry-free system. So the hydro, hydro generation uh, takes care of itself and there's uh, no worries about putting props back in reverse or forward or neutral or whatnot. It's just a very simple plug and play, no worries, uh, hydro generation feature. Okay, so like um, we reviewed in the specs, the, uh, the 18 horsepower diesel, two, two piston diesel uh, in this boat, it's, um, it's fairly loud and it creates a lot of vibration. Um, and that's that's really what creates the noise. Uh, the vibration of the of all the panels and the uh, the lids and everything in the boat is really what's noticeable. And uh, I'll start the boat here in a minute so that um, hopefully it comes through in the in the video so that you can hear uh, the vibration and you can hear the noise from the motor. Okay, so let's uh, let's start it up. particularly bad when um, the motor is cold. So another thing on, uh, on a diesel boat um, is that uh, it probably isn't audible behind me, but the bubbling in the water is uh, the cooling system um, uh, pumping out water. And so, and in terms of sound also, um, it's just another, adding another um, source of noise uh, on the boat that we hope to eliminate with the electric body. Uh, let's take a look back here. Let's get a little bit of video and hopefully audio of what that looks like. And another issue is um, you can hear this. This boat has a folding propeller, um, like we'll see up on the trailer um, when we talk about the installation of the pod, but the folding prop, when you put it into gear, when the blades um, open up, uh, makes a, what sounds like a, a banging noise. Let's see what you do. It'll come through on the video. That's forward right there. And we'll give it a little bit of gas and see if... Um, that's about 
that's 1,500 RPMs. And, um, and right now, so all the lids are rattling, and this is this is not an ideal RPM to run at this time, on this one at least. So we're gonna give it a little bit more gas. It's a little bit happier, about 2,000 RPMs. Which is right about there. And it's not terribly loud or uncomfortable, but uh, obviously the, the pod is gonna make, uh, make it completely silent. So the other thing to talk about is maintenance. Um, this particular boat is due for maintenance. Uh, it's due for an oil change, it's due for an impeller change, it's due for, um, for injectors soon. Uh, the motor mounts need to be changed, uh, the transmission fluid needs to be changed, and uh, that just is uh, it's gonna add up. So uh, this is a great opportunity to take those costs that uh, would have other otherwise just put, in, put into maintenance and uh, Use that towards making the electric conversion, uh, and that's just what makes sense in this particular application. Uh, but you know, it's, it's a good opportunity to eliminate those costs altogether, uh, and then just off, offset it for the future. And, and of course, you know the the other part of it is just the experience of, of being out on the boat. Um, you know, to be able to, if, you, if you've ever sailed before, if you like to sail, uh, one of the enjoyable parts of it is, is not having that engine noise um, and just hearing the water and hearing the air and just relaxing. Uh, we're looking forward to this conversion and we hope you tune in. Thanks for watching.